Can I start? All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ricardo Marcus. Um, growing up, um, I used to, I had a grandmother that uh, suffered terribly with uh, debilitating headaches. So I was very young, and we always used to be at the, the dining room table, and we used to be eating lunch, supper, or whatever, and she had to leave the dining room table to go into a dark room. So I was very young, so I didn't really understand what was going on. As I got older, I started to realize that she suffered terribly with migraines. So unfortunately, she passed away in my, my later teens, but that's when I made a, a conscious decision where I was going to make sure that I could help people when I finished school and qualified. So then after school, I thought, let me enroll into chiropractic. And I did a six-year program at the Durban University of Technology. Um, upon qualifying, I then opened up two practices in South Africa, uh, ran them for seven years. And in the seven years, I did achieve my goal, which was to help people. And that was through education as well as through treatment. Then uh, further that, then my European roots started calling. So I left for Spain and I started my own practice here in Spain called Costa Spine. So I'm still continuing the route of helping people through treatments and through education. So that's what brings me here today is I'm going to be trying to educate you guys on um, correct posture and what can go wrong with um, the society today. So my title of my speech today is The De-Evolution of the Spine Thanks to the 21st Century. So <clears throat> I don't know what your guys' general knowledge is of the spine. And uh, you probably guys did basics biology back in school. So I'm just going to run through some simple anatomy and you guys can stop me, please, at any stage, ask questions. I want this to be as informal and just basically be interactive as possible. All right, so I'm going to use George over here. All right. <clears throat> hey, George. All right. So <clears throat> as you can see, this is going to be your perfect anatomical position of a spine. You're going to have the nice good S shape of the spine. So <clears throat> you've got your cervical lordosis, your thoracic kyphosis, and your lumbar lordosis. All right, so in your cervical spine, you've got seven vertebra. In your thoracic, you've got 12 vertebra. In the lumbar, you've got five vertebra. The sacrum and the coccyx aren't really important vertebra, let's put it that way, because they are fused. So they're not going to give you a lot of mobility. All right, so <clears throat> as you see the spine over here, you've got the white object, which is your bone, which is hard, which is not going to really go anywhere. The other thing which as you can see is a translucent in between the bone is your intervertebral discs. Now those are predominantly made up of water. All right, so I'll explain why the water and the aging process is so important. But as you can see, you've got really good curvatures. Now, as you're born, um, you basically, in the, in the womb and as a fetus, you've got a primary curvature, which is predominantly a C-shaped curvature. So <clears throat> that's going to be maintained in your thoracic spine, which is known as your kyphotic curve. Now, as you're born and you start looking up at your mom, your dad, and your environment, you develop your cervical lordosis. All right. Your lumbar lordosis is your, your last secondary curvature to develop. And that starts at the age of three months and is fully mature after eight to ten years. All right. So <clears throat> these curvatures are incredibly important because if you could imagine the spine was dead straight. All right. I'm sure if a lot of you guys are not engineers and stuff like that. But if an object was dead straight, where's all the weight going to go? It's going to go down to the bottom. Correct. It's going to go on to L4, L5, and it's going to basically be squashing the water-based substance, which is your disc. All right. So if it was straight, you would have a lot more disc issues early on in your life. So that's why these curvatures are so important. They disperse the weight equally through the spine. However, with it being S-shaped, it's probably not the most stable structure. So as we get to say 50, 60, 70, naturally your bone will degenerate. So it will start to straighten to support itself where you will lose mobility. All right. So, but as a person that's going to be from 20 to 40 to 50, we need to maintain those curvatures so that the weight doesn't go down to the disc and squash the disc. Because if the disc gets squashed, it's going to basically push outwards and therefore I, me as a practitioner I get to see this very very commonly is disc bulges so disc bulges push outwards they touch onto the nerve and I'm sure a few people that you know develop sciatica so most of the time they'll have back pain and they'll have immense pain down the back of the leg and predominantly the reason for that is the disc between L4 
L5, S1, gets squashed, and where that nerve innervates, it goes all the way down the leg, and you get that electric burning sensation. So how and why would we lose these secondary curvatures? The reason why we lose these curvatures is because of poor posture. All right, so now I'm just going to do a simple test and uh, thing. You guys can also more than welcome to demonstrate it as well. So now if I stand and I use this piece of wood over here, all right, I'm going to assume the worst possible posture. All right, I'm going to have anterior head carriage, rounded shoulders. I'm going to straighten up my lumbar spine, so I'm going to lose my lordosis, and then I'm going to put the stick between over here. So anterior, rounded shoulders, and I'm going to straighten my back, and I'm going to rotate, rotate. All right, so you can see my range of movement is not so great. Now, if I get good posture, get my head back, I get my shoulder blades down and together, push my pelvis forward, exaggerate my lumbar curvature, we do that again, we take a look at our movement. All right, so basically, shoulders down, exaggerate, and we can see how much further we can go. So that's basically demonstrating how important your secondary curvatures are, and if you have poor posture. Now, now, how does poor posture come about? Now, poor posture probably wasn't something that we really had back in the olden days because we were workers. Now, the work has changed because we're really in the 21st century. Everything is predominantly um, with computers, phones, cell phones. Like, how often are you guys spending your day on a phone, on a computer, on an iPad, all those kind of things? probably a very long period of time. So if you're on your phone, you're on your cell phone, you're on your computer, you are gonna be developing the rounded shoulders, anterior head carriage, leaning forward. So you're perpetuating that poor posture. So the other reasons why you're gonna have poor posture is we probably now also are working from eight to five. We're in a desk situation. We're on a desk, we're sitting there, and in a seated position, again, it's terrible for the spine. So in a seated position, even when I'm now, is four times your own body weight is going through those bottom two discs. So it's just a matter of time until those discs push outwards again, and we all are going to have low back pain. Then the other thing, thanks to the 21st century, is we can't ignore it as well, is um, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, your Snapchat. Now, you probably don't realize the effect that it has psychologically on you. So you on Facebook, you look at a person that you, you admire and you follow, and... Um, you think, oh, gee, I'm never going to aspire to that. So it affects your self-esteem. So again, when you're out and about, instead of actually walking out proudly, shoulders back, chest forward, you actually are very drawn to be kind of going down in a sense like that. So again, 21st century, the pressures of trying to be the cool person or trying to be the right person also can affect you. So psychologically, it also is a big, big thing. Um, poor posture. All right, so inevitably, if we continue down this road over here, we are going to lose our primary function. We are going to become immobile, which is not what we're meant to be. We're meant to be mobile. We've got numerous joints, numerous muscles. We've meant to be moving. All right. So, um, and also if you think about our ancestors, we were hunters and gatherers. That's why we were, we were so good. Now, I think if you look at the stats, low back pain is so prevalent. Um, aches and pains are so prevalent. It's, it's becoming an epidemic in a sense where we need to know what to do how to correct this poor posture all right so solution all right i know that i can't get all you guys because quitting your jobs and going to go and be active and doing all the things like the olden days we have to pay bills and we have to be reasonable we're not going to change society and we're probably not going to change technology it's probably going to keep evolving all right but what can we do to correct certain things all right most importantly it's education if you have an understanding of your spine, which I hopefully uh, we can ask more questions at the end, have a great basic understanding of what I've told you, you can at least correct that. All right. The other thing is that exercise. We need to be exercising at least 30 minutes a day. Simple exercises, nothing over the top. You can even do it at the desk. You can be doing it anywhere possible. The other thing is if we're going to be sitting for eight hours a day, ergonomics i know i'm speaking to laura later about the ergonomics and stuff like that it's crucial we need to make sure that your chairs have the lumbar support cushion or a lumbar support so it actually exaggerates your lumbar spine so you're not straightening it and you're not seated forward like that where the disc is going to be getting irritated the whole time 
The other thing is your monitor position. Sometimes I see people when I go into their workstation, they literally have their screens there. So they're working like that, then answering their phone. So that is really a no-no. Um, <clears throat> the other thing as well is if we can look at desks which are able to come up or go down. So there's leave for you can have a five to ten minute break where you're standing, you're engaging your muscles and you're getting mobile again. Um, Another big addition, which a lot of um, is getting a bit of momentum all over the world, is um, corporate wellness. Companies have kind of gone away with the motto in a sense where um, your customers come first, it's your employees come first. So your employees are your face of your company. So if they are feeling demotivated, sore, when somebody phones you and has a complaint, they're probably not going to be as willing to talk to them and be as friendly as they should be. Also, their quality of work won't be as good because they're always irritable, they're always sore. So corporate wellness is something that is really, really generating some steam because practitioners like myself, personal trainers, as psychologists will come in and they'll actually run boot camps. So in half an hour, 45 minutes in your lunch break, you can be active, you can get a treatment. So that's also hugely beneficial. The other thing as well is chiropractic is also beneficial because what chiropractic does, and I don't know if any of you guys, I've treated one or two of you, I've treated Oshie and uh, Mark. Um, so chiropractic is predominantly um, a high velocity, low amplitude movement into your spine. So if your spine is starting to straighten, which we don't want to happen, you can actually put movement into the spine to correct those poor curvatures and to keep those secondary curvatures for long as possible. Degeneration will happen, we just don't want it to happen rapidly. We only want that to start happening at 50, 60, then your spine can start stabilizing and then we can start losing mobility. But we need to put it off for as long as possible. The other thing as well is the psychological side. Psychology is also so, so important. Um, either seeing a counselor or reading books so you can do personal development on yourself so you can have the self-esteem in a sense to walk proudly and to know what correct posture is and hold yourself out high. Um, so basically that's how we're going to correct it. Um, but yesterday when I was just doing a little bit of research, uh, I read a very interesting article or a very interesting quote by P.W. Litchfield. Um, One realizes the full importance of time only when there's a little bit of it left. Every man's greatest capital asset is his unexpired years of productive life. So if it's important to you, you'll find a way. If it's not, you'll find an excuse. So... It's very, very important to take your, your spine and your back seriously because you only have one back. Yeah, so that's predominantly what I had to say today, guys. If you have any questions, please fire away. I've got Georgia to demonstrate anything. So any questions you want to know about health and wellness? Yes. You were mentioning the 300 80 millimeters a day. Yes. What would be the thing? So... Three minutes. It is. It's very short. Um, an article that I actually on my website is that... Um, it's quite an interesting article. Skinny, I mean, what is it? Fat, oh, it's skinny, what is it? Fat, fat, fit people don't die. Skinny, unfit people do die. So they're saying that if you're exercising just 30 minutes a day, so it can either be weight resistance training, cardiovascular, as long as your muscles are moving, that is the most important part. So they say that if you aren't active, you're more likely to get diabetes, cholesterol, cancer and um, it was a really interesting article so if you do go onto my website please go and look at it and it's it's any form of exercise nothing nothing over the top you can be doing yoga you can be in pilates you can even do some form of meditation but long as we're getting our bodies moving in a way yeah yes i sit at my desk between eight and ten hours a day what can i do at my desk what you can do at your desk the de your desk most importantly is going to be your ergonomics I would say also maybe set an alarm every, say, hour, two hours to make sure that you get up and that you start walking. The other thing as well is you can implement a certain stretch regime at your, at your desk. So you can basically start doing your stretches of your head. You can do little workouts. You can get a band or resistance training. And the other thing as well is if your chairs don't have the lumbar support cushions, you can also buy the lumbar support cushions which attach onto your chair. That for me is immediate relief. Because eight hours a day, like I said, it's four times your body weight. So we need to avoid that. So we need to keep that lumbar lordosis proper. All right. Yes. What about your legs? Legs. Some people using leg support where, where they rest them on there. And, and other times they probably keep, keep 
Yeah. And also, where your thighs should be at level or... Yeah, so you sh your thighs should be in level and that I, what I've been taught is that your feet should be on the ground. Um, I'm not 100% sure about the, the foot rest, but I would say if your knees are 90 degrees, your feet aren't crossed and equal like that, um, like a shoulder width away, that will probably be your best posture possible, hey? Oh, one more. Yes. Um, have you done any kind of, I don't know, tricks or anything? Because when you're sitting at the computer, yes. you can start off the day with a correct posture. But naturally, for a lot of people, they find themselves just gradually slipping down into bad posture. It's a habit. Yes. Is there any kind of tricks that they can use to break that habit? Um, certain tricks that I do tell my patients is that it's sometimes such simple things. Um, with people, sometimes what your eyesight is. So sometimes I always tell them, my patients, what is your eyesight? Is your vision good? If your vision isn't good, go and get it tested. Because sometimes before you even know it, you're looking at the screen and you get so captivated with your work. When your eyesight's not great, you start going forward and then you start typing like that. The other big thing as well as, as a lady, I also make sure that the lady's bra strap's the correct sizing. Because if they're not, you can the pressure on the straps can put a lot of pressure on the shoulder and also make them kind of lean forward like that. So it's those simple things that you can do at the desk. Um, the biggest thing you're probably going to have to do is you have to start taking ownership of your posture and what you do. You know what I mean? You must almost maybe have a note or have those little sticky pads on your monitor and say, please look at your posture, make sure your posture is good. And you can kind of correct yourself every 20, 30 minutes. And um, there is new devices that are coming out where it connects to your back of your head and it connects to the wall. So as you start leaning forward, it makes a noise. So then you have to go back like that. So those are new little tricks. And there's also another thing as well, which is a harness. Uh, I had a harness um, and I lent it to one of my patients and um, it basically makes sure you can't go anywhere but have great posture. So that's also another trick that you could try. Yeah. Correct, correct. Like I said, the disc is predominantly water, so hydration is very, very important. Huh? That, I'm not 100%. That would probably be, have to be for Mythmusters to come in and <laughs> bust that one. <laughs> I'm not sure about that one, huh? But yeah. There's some questions yeah. online. Yes. Um, Michael says, I have a slip disc that I have been dealing with for some years now. When in acute pain, a visit to the chiropractor helps, but I find the pain comes back after a while. Do you recommend chiropractic as a practice to help with such problems? Good question. Um, that is something very, very commonly that I do get. Um, again, chiropractic is going to assist the problem. It's not going to fix the problem. So that's why I spend a lot of time educating my patients and I actually give them a, t a checklist or a to-do list when it comes to disc problems. So me as a practitioner, when it's an acute disc, adjusting them sometimes can make the condition worse. So you actually want to flood the area with as much blood as possible. So what I would do then is I wouldn't be doing a lot of soft tissue work. I would be doing a lot of dry needling in the area because dry needling ruptures capillaries right by the disc and then it brings more blood, more nutrients so that the disc can heal itself. Secondly, the disc is only bulged because it's become unstable. The other thing that I did when I did my master's degree was core stability training. I spend a lot of time on my patients educating how to engage and recruit the core. Um, so core training is essential. The other thing is correct nutrition. So um, patients that have a disc or that are going to be ages, like ages of 55 onwards, I start, I tell them to take glucosamine, chondroitin, hyaluronic acid, and MSM. The hyaluronic acid is fantastic for disc problems. Predominantly, I've had patients where they were going to have surgery. They just started taking high dosage of hyaluronic acid, and that, with core stability training, made a huge, huge difference. The other thing, if you have bad sciatica, um, it's predominantly nerve damage. So your nerve is just getting irritated and compressed by that disc. The only thing that fixes nerve is vitamin B. So vitamin B injections, vitamin B supplementation, because nerve damage is going to be your slowest one to heal. So that's what, that what most of the time, most of my patients complain is they'll have initial back pain, but the nerve damage can stay for like three to six months. So vitamin B supplementation would be good. The other thing, if the, the sciatica is terrible, because a lot of patients go, I've got a throbbing foot, I've got a throbbing cough, they can also take medications such as Lyrica, which they have to get from their GP, which then numbs the nerve a little bit. 
So that would be the best protocol for um, disc. And if it's a cute disc, there's nothing better than an a basic an SI belt because I did my back uh, when I was doing a deadlift probably six years ago and um, I was in excruciating pain and I put a back brace on, did all these things that I recommended and I have just do core stability training at least three times a week and um, for me, it's been an absolute lifesaver. I haven't had one back problem. Core stability training is definitely the answer as well as swimming. Yeah. Uh, Salvatore asks, would you recommend the use of standing workstations and desks? Yeah, I would, I would recommend the ones that can move because, of course, standing for long, pr prolonged periods of time, if your core is not strong enough, will cause back pain. Then that you can adjust, then you can be sitting. So I would, be, I would say if you could get the desks that are adjustable, that would be a winning, huh? <laughs> That's good. I've got one more. All right. Uh, Michael says, if you go to work on foot for 30 minutes a day, I would say that is great. At least you're doing something. However, you're only going to be working certain parts of your body. We need all parts of your body moving. So if you could also incorporate 10 to 15 minutes of doing other form of exercising, stretching the upper body, doing push-ups, doing star jumps, any stuff, you don't have to go to the gym. But that would be, in my mind, ideal. If you could go to the gym, you could do Pilates, you could do yoga. Um, and that also then starts on a whole nother system because a lot of ladies that I see um, have got a condition known as BGHS, which is your benign joint hypermobility syndrome. Sorry, this might take a bit long, but I'd rather rather educate as much as I can. So, so that condition is is horrible because a lot of ladies love yoga, but it can actually be detrimental to them. So there's normally seven points or seven areas that you check. So the first is the thumb. So if you can go and the thumb can touch your wrist, that's one. The other one is if you straighten your elbow, if it goes past 180 degrees. The other one is if you stand and you straighten your legs going past 180 degrees. The other one is hands. If your palms can touch the floor, then it's shoulders, how far they can go back. So if you get four out of seven, that means you have BGHS. So that means you as a person are unfortunately unstable. Your ligaments are lax compared to what a normal person would be. So that's just genetics. Females are more prone to having that. So what they need to do is they need to be in the gym doing resistance training. So ligaments go from bone to bone. Muscle goes, basically tendons go from your bone to bone in a sense, but it's more of a muscle orientation. So they're both crossing the, the joint. So if you're going to gym and you get a good tone, that is what's going to also stabilize the joint. So if you don't have very good strong ligaments and you've got lax ligaments, you need to be in the gym. If you're going to the gym or if you're just doing yoga, you are really stretching out lax ligaments that don't need to be stretched out. So therefore, ladies must be a little bit careful and also get assessed before they start doing yoga and all of those kind of things at the same time because rather stick to Pilates and weight resistance training. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. No worries at all. <laughs> Thanks, guys.